Hello everyone, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're outside, we're experimenting with cyanotype and toning with instant coffee. So, yesterday I had done some contact prints between mowing the yard, I would set up different ones at different times. These were about eight minutes. These were about 10 minutes, and you could tell that they are almost completely Prussian blue. You can barely even see the strips of the negatives there. So I figured it'd be a great one to experiment with. I'm gonna take the washing soda, mix it into water in this first one, then we'll see and watch how it changes. Then we'll try to stop the bleaching process using um, just regular old water. And then from there, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't know if this is good or not, but this is some instant coffee from the dollar store. I was looking at the ingredients and it said 100% instant coffee. I didn't know that that was an actual thing. I, I would guess it would have other ingredients in there, but <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Um, so we're just gonna experiment with that and see how it tints it and tones it. So the paper that is way too uh, exposed I cut up into pieces to fit into here and we'll put them in one at a time and see um, what images come forward. This one I think we'll have the best results with so I can kind of see somewhat of an image but let's see if we can zoom in on just this. Scooch this down, push this over Go right there. Okay, perfect. We're gonna drop this one in. And hopefully we can see real time the images reforming. I haven't really gotten scientific with my quantities of washing soda yet. And hopefully I won't have to, as I'll be building an exposure uh, unit box. I'll be making a video on that once I get the materials in. Yep, so this guy's definitely coming back. It just amazes me how that visual data gets saved on the paper. The one thing with the bleaching process, um, you have to be careful because you'll over bleach and you want to stop it before you want to um, get to the point that you want to be at because it'll keep going as you bring it to the next, to the wash off. But for scientific purposes, I want to push this one pretty far so we can see what comes back out of it. So, it's probably best to stop here. You should be able to see how much that changed. I'm going to move this into my rinse off water and I'll throw in this other dark one and we'll see how this one changes. Let's see. I'll probably turn this sideways so you get a better view. Ultimately, it's a mixture of overexposure to the sun when I was creating these, as well as um, negatives that aren't that dense, from what I understand. So I'm going to play with different developers for the film, and then from there play with um, different exposure times. You can see how much we got back from the, just that black Oh, sorry, dark blue paper. All right, so 
I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll have a second part. I think I'll either tie in a second part to this or just have a second video up with the coffee toning. All right, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. All right, so here are our 24 hours later dried results of the coffee toning. And this one I'm very happy with. First of all, I just love this scene. I always photograph it. I always paint it. So um, I'm happy that I'm getting that old-timey feel with that. So I, I, I like the color of the um, the coffee toning. Uh, these ones I wanted to kind of talk about, even though there's nothing really a lot going on with it. Hopefully in this one you can see that when we bleached it and then toned it, we're able to bring back some of that detail. Originally, we had just the flower kind of showing through, and now here we have some of the um, the leaves and the other flowers around it. At the end of the day, the, the photograph itself, the film itself, is just uh, not dense enough or contrasty enough to get good results, so I'm going to play around with developers. This... I wanted to talk about as you can see that faint ghost mark I think it's might be this right here so if you look closely you'll see that ghost mark right there and that kind of shows how I was um, toning the three of these together and with that wet and wet these were kind of adhering and it was preventing the flow of those chemicals, which was just coffee, to um, apply it to this area. So it's just good to know that if you're going to tone multiple prints together, you're going to want to um, separate them. That's probably common knowledge, but it's just good to see firsthand what could happen. Now, what I've been experimenting with when I do that is to take front and back and put them in the solution in that manner just so that the surface is going to be applied to it. So um, I think I'll take this one and I'll apply a glaze to it, probably in a different video, just so we can see what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you like this type of material, let me know and I'll start covering it more. Um, I feel a little choppy doing a video from one day to the next, um, trying to get into the flow of that. But I, I like this subject matter. I like... The alternative photography and the antique methods so uh let me know and i will talk to you all soon have a great day